Now let's discuss more of the headlines and simple keywords with Adam. Good morning, Adam. Happy Friday. Good morning, John. Happy Friday. How are you doing? We're doing good. It's the weekend, and uh, I'm looking forward to sleeping in tomorrow. Right. Well, uh, unfortunately, I have a schedule tomorrow morning, so I can't enjoy the morning sleep as much as you, which I'm very jealous of. But uh, yes, it is a Friday, and I am also looking forward to the weekend. All right. Well, I think people are also looking forward to uh, possible tax cuts coming up uh, for the general public and for companies here in Korea. Give us the first keyword of the day, Adam. Sweeping tax cuts. Korea plans to cut a range of taxes in a bid to boost business investment, create jobs, and spur economic growth. Give us how much savings. Right, so there's quite a lot to go through, so I'll try and keep it as simple as possible. But the UN administration is proposing uh, uh, cutting the maximum corporate tax rate uh, to 22% from the current 25%, and that puts Korea actually on par uh, with the OECD average. Now, it wants to lower the threshold for income taxes as well to put more salaried workers in the lower income tax uh, basket of 15%. Uh, and to revitalize the stock market, the government proposed to exempt capital gains taxes on retail investments, uh, except for holdings worth more than 10 billion won in any one stock. Now, the current four corporate income tax brackets will also be simplified to three. Also, the government will help small businesses by putting more companies into the lowest corporate tax bracket as well. So not just for individuals. Now, the lowest rate is currently at 10%, but it's only for very small businesses with a net income of less than 200 million won a year. Uh, but the new system for small companies will apply a marginal rate of 10% for the first 500 million won uh, and 20% after that. Now, the government is also trying to meet global standards by uh, making overseas investment in government bonds exempt from tax on interest income and capital gains. Uh, it is also pushing to join the World Government Bond Index, and most countries joining it uh, make investors exempt uh, from those taxes. So those are just some of the corporate and individual tax cuts proposals that have been made. Right, and a big uh, issue here in Korea is real estate. The real estate tax cuts are something that a lot of people are looking forward to because um, President Yoon made some promises while on the campaign trail. What was the announcement in terms of those taxes? Right, well, uh, people or companies with uh, large real estate assets get an extra tax bill for holding properties on top of the standard property tax. That's the current uh, policy. But with home prices in the country, of course, rising dramatically over the past uh, years, uh, many more homeowners fall into the threshold for that extra tax. Uh, and so... The government is raising that threshold, not only for single homeowners, but also for those who own multiple homes as well. Uh, for owners of two or more residential properties, for example, the threshold before having to pay the sector tax will be raised from the current 600 million to 900 million won. Uh, also, for those who just own one home, it'll be raised next year from the current 1.1 billion to 1.2 billion won. Uh, and just for this year, it will be temporarily raised to 1.4 billion won. Uh, now, Finance Minister Chu kyung says this is to adopt just taxation, but one realtor says this might lead to fewer properties being put on the market. Uh, and to address that problem and to encourage more sales, the government has eased capital gains taxes on property sales by multiple homeowners. Uh, meanwhile, uh, there are a slew of other tax cut proposals as well to stabilize people's livelihoods, for one, uh, as well as to fight inflation and also expand tax infrastructure. Uh, now, the UN government seeks to revise a total of 18 tax codes this year, which will reduce the government's revenue, tax revenue by just over 13 trillion won in the next five years. They'll send the bill to the National Assembly by September We'll have to see if it will get passed. Of course, the National Assembly is still uh, is a majority held by the main opposition Democratic Party, so it remains to be seen whether it will be passed. Of course, it is likely to face some backlash from the opposition party, but we'll have to see what happens. Okay, and moving on to the second keyword of the day. 
foreign ministry briefing. Foreign Minister Park Jin has given his briefing to President Yoon after his uh, visit to Tokyo. What were some of the main topics discussed? Right, so uh, their le- uh, the meeting lasted for quite a while, uh, two and a half hours. And during that, Park vowed to reset relations with Japan as well as China uh, and build a regional cooperative network to strengthen Korea's role as what he called a global pivotal state. Uh, Park uh, presented seven major diplomatic tasks. These include a diplomacy roadmap with major countries, uh, operation plans to promote economic security and on ways to engage North Korea in denuclearization dialogue. Uh, With Japan, Korea will aim to recover trust and resume what uh, Park called shuttle diplomacy as part of Seoul's drive to improve relations. Now, the term shuttle diplomacy uh, used in the context of Korea-Japan relations uh, refers to regular and frequent exchanges. It was a term that was coined by uh, a former U.S. government official, uh, which uh, entailed a third party mediate in conflicts between two countries. But that's not how it's being used in the Korea-Japan relations. Um, On Park's report of his trip to Tokyo, Yoon reiterated his determination to revive bilateral ties. Uh, And to make top-level talks regular, the ministry would continue to hold high-level and working-level talks with uh, its Japanese counterpart. Uh, Park added that Seoul would also work to come up with the most rational solution to resolve major disputes with Japan, uh, including the issue of forced labour compensation, uh, of of which a court ruling is expected to come out either next month or in September. Uh, Meanwhile, the minister said the country would pursue strategic communication with the U.S. to make ministerial and high-level official talks regular as well. Uh, On relations with China, uh, Park said the ministry would work to increase high-level talks and expand tangible exchanges of mutual benefit uh, based on common values and rules. Uh, Korea would also suggest China to form a 2 plus 2 working group meeting to bring together Uh, the foreign and defense vice ministers. Um, Seoul is currently actually in talks with Beijing to coordinate Park's visit to China in August. Uh, That's in line for the 30th anniversary of the uh, diplomatic ties of the two countries. Of course, Korea is in the middle of a balancing act between the US and China. It's kind of on the fence of whether to um, join the so-called FAB4 or CHIP4 alliance. Uh, that's aimed, uh, that's led by the US and aimed at trying to uh, rival China uh, in terms of the chip industry. Um, Addressing ways to handle North Korea, meanwhile, Park said the South will continue to make efforts to persuade Pyongyang uh, to come to the the negotiation table for denuclearization. Okay, and speaking of the semiconductor industry, give us the third keyword of the day. Chip investments. The Korean government is accelerating its steps to become a leading semiconductor nation. This includes tax incentives and government support for related companies while fostering talent by the thousands. Okay, so this has been a common uh, news topic uh, on our show this week. More support from the government. That's right. So the government plans to maximize corporate investment uh, and invest more than 340 trillion won Uh, over the next five years. Now, it also aims to nurture more than 150 skilled workers um, in the field. We've been through that uh, detail already, so I won't go into it again. Now, the new scheme also aims to ease regulatory hurdles for the chip industry overall. Uh, The government plans to raise the allowable floor area ratio of the nation's two chip-making complexes in Pyeongtaek and Yongin to have more clean rooms. That's where Uh, chip making or silicon wafers are manufactured into chips uh, and all this is to help uh, create more jobs. Now one clean room is actually known to generate some 1,000 new jobs hence why the government wants to increase uh, the number of clean rooms. Now the overall approval process for new investments and facility expansion within the complexes will get faster uh, and more flexible for speedier decision making and business planning as well. Uh, a 350 billion one research and development fund is also under consideration. Uh, the government has also set goals to increase the nation's global market share of system chips from the current 3% to 10% by the year 2030. So quite a jump. Uh, and it also wants to boost the rate of domestic supply for materials, parts and equipment 
um, from the current 30 to 50 percent. All right, and jumping from one conglomerate to another, give us the fourth keyword. Uh, Hyundai Profits. Hyundai Motor has uh, beaten market expectations with its earnings for the second quarter and announced record highs in both sales and operating profit. They're making pretty good cars that are winning a lot of awards these days. Yeah, especially uh, not just in the domestic market, but overseas as well. So that's where most of the sales are coming from. And that's led to the car makers operating profit jumping to nearly 3 trillion won. Now, the last time the company recorded operating profit above 2 trillion won was actually in the second quarter uh, of 2014. Uh, And of course, especially when considering we've had a pandemic and a lot of supply chain disruptions, that's quite a feat. Now, Hyundai's revenue also increased uh, just under 19% on year to 36 trillion won. Net profit was just over 3 trillion won. That's up nearly 55.5% on year. Uh, The jump is mainly thanks to increased luxury vehicle sales and the weak Korean won, which is quite interesting. Uh, Now, Korea is usually known as a car uh, brand that sells a lot of uh, good value cars. Well, it's not really known for its luxury vehicles. The people usually tend to go to Germany or Japan for that. Uh, um, German and Japanese manufactured cars, rather, I should say. Now, the good performance comes uh, despite reduced sales. Uh, That's, of course, as I mentioned, due to shortage of automotive chips uh, globally. Uh, The number of cars actually sold decreased by just over 5% on year, but robust sales of high-end Genesis vehicles, the luxury arm of Hyundai, as well as SUVs and, of course, electric vehicles as well in the US and Europe, those were the ones that drove profits. Uh, And, of course, the weakness of Korea's currency against the dollar also helped boost the bottom line as well. Um, But the company was cautious about the outlook for the latter half of the year. It noted that while the chip shortage is getting better, uncertainties in market conditions are expected to continue, of course, due to geopolitical risks and also the resurgence of COVID-19 cases as well. Uh, And as part of measures to increase market share and profitability, uh, Hyundai said it will fortify its electrification portfolio with the launch of the um, Ionic 6 uh, in the third quarter and maybe other electric vehicles and more product lineups as well. Yeah, you mentioned how traditionally it's been German and Japanese auto uh, manufacturers that got the luxury line. But I think Korean automakers, especially Hyundai, is leading the charge in catching up to them. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's certainly doing quite well. All right. And give us the fifth and final keyword. ECB rate hike. The European Central Bank has raised interest rates for the first time since 2011. And this increase caught some people by surprise because of the size of it, right? Right. I mean, there's a total of 19 members that use the euro. So, of course, they do have a long process uh, of making a decision and they do have to make a decision very carefully when coming up with these rate hikes, if any do happen. And of course, as you mentioned, this is a surprise move and the ECB pushed its base rate up by uh, half a percentage point. Now, economists have actually expected a smaller quarter percentage point rise. Uh, so this is quite a big move. Now, the ECB said the increase was necessary, uh, especially after a surge in food and fuel costs that showed no signs of easing uh, in the next few months. Now, it's not just in Europe, but across the world here in Korea as well, which is uh, causing a bit of a problem. Uh, Now, the ECB's president, Christine Lagarde, expected inflation to remain undesirably high for some time. Uh, She said the depreciation uh, of the euro against the dollar had raised import costs, adding to inflationary pressures. Meanwhile, the economic outlook for the 19-member currency bloc was weakening as well, causing policymakers a headache as they weighed up the likely path of inflation next year. Uh, If the economy falls into recession, it will put uh, put, uh, downward pressure on prices towards the ECB's 2% target without the need for further interest rate uh, rises. Now, the ECB had previously signaled it would be increasing rates in July and September as consumer prices keep surging. But it was unclear whether it would go as far as bringing rates back to zero. Um, That would end an era of negative rates dating back to the Greek debt crisis back in uh, 2012. Now, the ECB has three main interest rates. The bank's deposit rate is now 0%, so that's out of negative territory. 
And there's also the main refinancing operations rate, which is now at half a percent. And the marginal lending facility is now at three quarter percent. Now, markets are now pricing in a 50 basis point rate as well, uh, a hike in September. And it sees a combined 127 basis points of rises um, over the rest of the year as well. So it seems like the ECB is following uh, in line with the footsteps of uh, Korea and also the U.S. Fed as well in terms of increasing interest rates. Okay, well, thank you for uh, bringing us the details on those stories. Okay, have a great weekend. Uh, You too. Have a good weekend. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.